Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Starting a new semester, I'm talking to my students about something called operations specifications. Sometimes people call it OPSPECs for short. This is a concept that's really important for you to understand as an airline pilot, as an aircraft dispatcher, but it's probably something you've never heard of, and maybe you didn't even hear about it anywhere in your aviation training. So I just want to do a high level overview with a few examples of what are operation specifications. What are we even talking about? So let's start. I'm going to try to draw a pyramid on my slide. Yes. And we have three levels of the pyramid when we think about operation specifications and how they fit in with the other parts of 14 CFR. So for an operational perspective, on the bottom, we have part 91, because we know that part 91 is where we have all the operating rules generally. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know part 121 is another piece which I have experience working with, covering air carriers conducting certain types of operations. So sometimes part 121 rules trump part 91 rules. Example. Part 91 gives how many certain instruments you have to have on an airplane if you're operating under instrument flight. Part 121 goes a little farther and says, oh, actually, you also need another third attitude indicator it has to be separately lighted, separately operated for emergency type situations. That's not required in 91, but it is in 121. So that's a place where 121 essentially trumps 91. It's a more strict rule. But what's on the top of the pyramid is what we're going to be diving into today, and that is op specs, which it doesn't fit in my pyramid, ha, huh? because it's the top of the pyramid. It is a way that airlines can get rules, and I don't want to say rules. It is in the name, specifications, tailored for their type of operation. Okay, we are going to go through some examples. Every air carrier operating under Part 121 has to have operations specifications. People call them op specs for short because, yes, op specs is a long word. But this contains a lot of different things that govern the operation of the aircraft being operated by that air carrier. Example. In Part 121 domestic operations and Part 121 flag operations. If you don't know what that is, I will link to a video explaining that in my video description. Um, it has different fuel requirements, but those air carriers have to have a list of airports that they can go to. That list is not found in part 121 because let's say American goes to different airports than Delta, goes to different airports than Southwest. Okay. But each of those airlines has their own list of operation specifications. In that list, it says, oh, American Airlines, here's all the airports you can go to for your regular service. Incidentally, I mentioned American because if the weather's bad in Dallas, sometimes over here at East Texas Regional Airport, where I am based, we sometimes get diversions from Dallas, but only from American. Never have I ever seen a Southwest airplane diverting over to East Texas Regional. Southwest, I'm almost sure, does not have East Texas Regional Airport in their op specs in the list of airports that they go to. So um, that is an example where it there's nothing in 121 about that, but it's required for each airline who's operating under domestic or flag operating rules to have a list of airports. Okay, so things in op specs. This is authorizations required for that air carrier to do its operations. Procedures under which certain parts of their operations are going to be conducted. Again, it's not part of the air carrier's certificate, but we have to have them to operate. So examples of things they must have. We have to have where they are located. FAA needs to be able to find you. The business names under which your company has been approved to operate. You can't just change your name uh, if you don't like the publicity you're getting without changing your op specs. And these can be updated and changed, but it has to be done in an organized fashion. 
The Department of Transportation, or the DOT, gives each air carrier what they call economic authority, meaning they've essentially checked your bank status, your financials, if you will, to make sure that you are a legitimate company that they think can operate. So if they issue you your economic authority, that's one of the requirements to actually operate type of aircraft, the registration numbers of aircraft. Air carriers cannot just randomly add airplanes to the certificate. You have to actually use, have the list of airplanes that are authorized in your OPSPECs specific to the registration and serial numbers. Like I mentioned, airports that you're going to use, the different kinds of operations. Like I said, domestic, flag, supplemental. At the airline where I worked, we were a supplemental air carrier authorization for where you can operate. So it's not just some air carriers cannot just operate all over the place. Uh, when I first, when we first started our air carrier that I was working at, we were a charter company and we were only flying in the 48 contiguous United States. That was our area of operation. Uh, even includes things like how you're going to control the weight and balance of your aircraft. That, that really matters and it has to be documented. If you're going to do some kind of arrangement where you're leasing aircraft to another company, that would be listed in your ops specs. We're going to get to a little bit example of deviations or exemptions, but one of the exemptions most, most heard of is sometimes called exemption 3585 or 17347, which is a exemption. I have a super popular video about that where you can have an aircraft depart with really poor weather if you have another alternate. That's actually an exemption from what 121 rules say, but going back again to my example at the beginning when I drew this pyramid, if we have an exemption in our op spec, it actually trumps 121. Now, don't expect that the FAA is just going to give you any other kind of random exemption that you want, uh, but it is a thing that you can apply for, and there's some precedent for that. So now that we looked at what things are in op specs, let's talk about major classifications of op specs. These are the different ones. A is just your general, B is in route, things that you're gonna do in route. C is your, a lot of things about uh, taking off landing and terminal operations. D is all about how you're gonna do your maintenance, and then E is specific to weight and balance. Okay. So now I want to show you guys a few examples. So as an example, here are a list, old list from an air carrier where I used to work that doesn't exist anymore. But here we have examples of things that we had in our op specs part A. We had a list of people who are allowed to exercise operational control. We had how we are going to exercise operational control. We had an approval for a electronic record keeping system. Okay. And we had a list of our airplanes that could operate. So in fact, I will go ahead and show you part of that. Here is our authorization that we had. That was a supplemental air carrier. Uh, at the time that this op spec was pulled, we could operate 767-246 aircraft in a passenger configuration, daytime or nighttime, with no more than 218 seats. And we always had to have five flight attendants. So that is very specific information that is provided there. Okay, um, let me show you guys another example of something that would be in your op spec. So this is a different air carrier, but um, domestic operations, if you watch that video, I linked in the description, you can see that a domestic operation is all within the United States, 48 contiguous states. But an air carrier might have the approval here is one in A12 to operate certain airports that are outside the 48 states, but they are allowed to operate those under a domestic rule instead of having to use the flag rules. And this airline had a certain list. These are the only ones that they were allowed to do that with, but they could operate those under a domestic rule. So again, example of something where it's a little bit different, perhaps. Um, here we have, for example, approach information, like what kinds of approaches can actually be done, okay? Uh, lower than standard takeoff minimum. Ah, oh, this is another one of my super popular videos. I will link to that in the description. But 
if your air carrier has this special op spec, it can take off with lower than standard takeoff minima. Standard takeoff minima we find in part 91 is one of those base type of regulations. But if your air carrier has the approval and you've trained your crew properly, you can use the lower than standard takeoff minima when you are using this rule. So again, helpful, um, helpful, but it has to be approved under your op specs. So again, I will link to that video so you can check that out as well. Here's another list of airports as an example. So here's a list that some air carrier has and it has a whole huge list of airports. It even says what aircraft can go there. And I've got a little key up here at the top of what type of airport that is. A regular is somewhere they would go in normal service. Refueling, they can only use it for refueling. You can't add any passengers or cargo. Alternate, you can only list it on the dispatch release as an alternate airport. Provisional is a little weird, but it's basically if the main airport in that place is not available, then the air carrier could use that. And this op spec is C70. Now, how do I know that? It's not even like labeled on here. Well, okay, the cool thing about op specs is let me go back to like my list here. The op specs are numbered the same at every air carrier. So great. When you go to work for fill in the blank airline, you can say, oh, what kind of airports are in your airport list? Uh, C70. Then they will tell you and you're like, oh, okay, you're speaking the same language or you're like talking about what's in our C70. Now you might say, well, wait, here's a C. This is C. This was actually from the air carrier where I worked, C. But there is no C70. Why not? Why don't you have one? Don't you have a list of airports? Okay, this is a little unique. We were a supplemental air carrier. As part of supplemental, that falls into the bucket of a non-scheduled operation. So where I worked, we were doing just charter flights and we didn't have a specific schedule that we submitted to the Department of Transportation. So because of that, we had no list in C70, so our air carrier did not apply for OPSPEC C70. It was unnecessary. And as a supplemental carrier, you're allowed to go to any airport in your area of operation that's approved so long as that has actually been vetted, essentially. And so we had flight followers, we had operations center, and we would check out the airport before we would go to that airport. But that's why my OPSPECs C70 doesn't show up in my list of my op specs. So, so I hope you guys found that helpful. Thank you for watching Aviation 101 with Laura. Please check out the video links below. I'm gonna to link to some popular ones about unpacking some of these regulations. But now you have a leg up on everybody else who has no idea what op specs are. Now you know, and thank you for watching. Have a fantastic day.